In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to use Capwing. So Capwing is a collective of different tools and resources that you can use to create digital content online. Let's begin by taking a look at all the tools that Capwing has to offer. So if you go to capwing.com and click on tools, you'll be able to see all of these tools. So there's everything from studios to meme generators, you can add subtitles, train videos. As you can see, there's a lot to choose from. In this video, we're going to focus on the Studio tool today. So the Studio tool makes it really easy to be able to create quick or long form videos. So to begin, go ahead and click on Studio under the Tools menu. From here, you'll click on the Get Started button. So now here we are in the Capwing Studio Editor. You can either upload a file if you've added a recording on a different device or on your computer directly. You can upload it here or you can start with a blank canvas, and that's what I'm gonna do here today. So as you can see, this is the studio, so there's a couple areas that you might wanna take note of. So here we have the upper toolbar, which contains all things including the upload, so if you want to upload a file either from the library, you can do an image search if you have other projects, and you can also add emojis too from there. But if you've recorded something outside of Capwing, you can upload it here. That might be something that's hosted on Google Drive, or maybe it's a video that's on YouTube that you want to reference. You can download that or uh, add a link to it and then upload it into your editor. The next option in the toolbar is the text option. So here you can see by clicking on text, it added some sample text to our uh, editor scene. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. Then we have images. So here you can search directly for images. If you don't have your own and you want to just search and import, you can do it that way. Timeline allows you to add different content and when it's coming in or out of the video scene. We'll look at that more in a little bit. Audio is pretty self-explanatory. You can add different music or audio clips into your scene in video. Here you can directly add subtitles. Elements includes things like shapes, progress bars, waveforms. And finally here you have the record option which allows you to record your screen and then it will import that recording once complete into Capwing. You can also record your camera only. You can also choose to have both your webcam and your audio as part of that option. And then here you can just do an audio recording. So really convenient that you can record and basically import them once you're done recording right into the editor. So those are our different options here. So let's go back and take a look. I just clicked on the text menu item in the toolbar, which brought up this sample text for us. So as you can see, the this box here is, uh, this white box is referred to as a scene. So if you have a longer video, which most likely most videos will contain more than one scene. Uh, so you can add additional scenes by clicking add scene. As you can see on each scene, you can identify how long that scene is intended to be. So this is three seconds, this is also three seconds. If I click that button there, this is the timeline. It'll open up my timeline so I can choose exactly when these different scenes are popping up as well as any audio or different uh, transitions and things like that. So you may notice that this video is square. So maybe that's something that you want depending on if this is like, you know, a GIF or an ad or something you want to put on a website. In this case, let's look at this as almost like a video that we would upload to YouTube. So in that case, I'm going to choose the 16 by 9 ratio because that's pretty common. As you can see, there's some other default sizes here depending on what you're doing with your video once you're done with it. So as you saw there, when I clicked on my scene, I was able to select that output size, which changed the size of the scene itself. So we can also add padding to our video. So that's going to add padding to the top, bottom, left, right, or we can remove padding entirely and it's gonna cut exactly to whatever's on our scene. So that might be useful in some context, but for today, we're just going to be focusing on building out a regular 16 by nine video. 
We can also update our background color. There's some color defaults that you can select from here, or you can use the eyedropper tool to select something from the canvas. If you're familiar with hex codes, you can type in a hex code or select from the ones here. So if I know a hex code, I know that this code is orange, and I type that in, and I click out. As you can see, my background has updated to that hex color. So let's go back to white. As you can see, because I only have one thing in my scene, under the layers section, that's all that's shown there. But let's go ahead and import an image. So I'm going to search for dog. And I can click on an image, and now I have my image in as well. You'll notice when I click on the corners of this image, I, when I click and drag it, I can choose how that is cropped based on how I'm moving that. So that's pretty cool. If you hold the shift key down while clicking and dragging one of those corners, it'll just scale it. It won't crop it for you. So there's an example of an image. So now that we've got two things in our scene, we have both text and an image, you'll see in the layers section here on the right sidebar that we can choose the order of the objects on our layer. So let's say that I want this image to be behind my text. All I'm going to do is move that in the layer order. So if I click on, for example, sample text, it's going to bring up the editing uh, toolbar for that object. From layer, I'm just simply going to click bring forward. And as you can see, now it's in front of my image. So let's go with a full screen image. So I've just scaled that so it takes up all the space on my scene there. Right now I'm selecting the image and you'll see that depending on what you're clicking on, the different editing options will vary. So for example, I clicked on the, the adjusting the image option, which allows me to play around with some different settings here, everything from opacity to saturation, blur. Those are all really useful when we're talking about having like a background and a foreground in our videos. So be sure to play around with those different options. Once you're done adjusting your image or whatever it may be, you would just hit apply. So now that I've got some sample text, which I will update here. So to update sample text, you can just double click on it and type in uh, whatever your text may be. So now that I've updated my text, you can see while it's selected that there are some different options such as font and so forth. So be sure to play around with that. Text color, pretty self-explanatory. As you can see, there's a black line around this text, which is the text outline. So I'm just going to disable that. You can choose a background color. So if I wanted this to have a little bar behind it, I could do that. So I'm going to select just a color here. As you can see, we have a color behind. We can round the corners of the object if we want, adjust the line height. So if you have like multiple uh, sentences in a text box, you can adjust the line height there. So those are all options to, to look into and to play around with. So while I've got this selected here, I'm going to, as you can see, I just updated the size of my text. You can choose to lock the ratio or not of the text itself so that when you are increasing or decreasing the box that it stays that size. So something to consider. Now you'll see that while the text is selected, we also have animate and effects. So I'm going to click on the animate tab. So this is going to control how that text box comes in or out of our scene. So there's some different options. You can click on them, explore them. It'll show you what that looks like. It'll preview it for you. Pretty cool. You can choose the animation speed as well. So slow, default, or fast. So those are animations. You can do that with images and other things as well, like your videos, if you import them. Finally, we have the effects tab. So you can choose to add some effects to the text. In this case, has an effect called drop shadow, which you can see there. 
So all things to, to explore and consider when you're starting to work in Cap One Studio. Now that we have our first scene done here, let's go ahead and click the play button to preview it. So what I'm going to do is move this little circle here on my timeline to the beginning and click play. So I can see there that within the three seconds of this scene that my text animation runs exactly how I want it to. So now I'm ready to move on to my next scene. So here we can add any additional scenes. So this would be a good way to transition into maybe something that's recorded. So you can definitely look into that. So here I could upload a recording. You could also add some more images and search for them. So that's, those are some options there. Here in the library, they provided with a simple uh, GIF, so we're just going to add that in this example. So here I have the video that they've provided us with as a starter kind of clip there. And I just increase the size of that to fill the scene. While that is selected, you can see the different video options. You can trim the video, adjust the way it looks, and or crop it if you choose to do so. With this video in particular, we can also increase the speed of it, add an outline, rotate, control the volume, and so much more. So be sure to look into those options as well. Just like our other objects, we can also animate them, and depending on what the object is, we can also add effects. So be sure to check those out. Now let's go ahead and add some audio. So we can upload a clip of audio here, or we can import something via a link. Let's cl just click on the try a sample button. So that's going to add some sample audio to this video. We'll click done there. And now let's preview our scene. So I'm going to select my scene and click the play button. So as you can see, my video played and that sample audio also played as well. Now that we've got a couple scenes, let's go into our timeline and take a look at how we can manipulate how items come in or out of our video. So if you click on that timeline tab in the toolbar, you'll see the full look at that particular scene or scenes, depending on what you've selected. So if I click back to studio and go here, I can also access the timeline by clicking this icon as well. So this just gives you a better detailed view of if you've got a couple things coming in. So let's say you have both a video, an image, some text, and maybe some emojis kind of coming in and out of your scene. Um, this is a great way to control, you know, are they just coming in the first couple seconds of your scene or are they there the whole time? So here I've selected the Dogs of the USA text object and just simply clicking and dragging this, I can control how long the scene is, how long I want my particular object to appear by just clicking and dragging it. You can also adjust um, if you select your object directly, you can adjust the, the start and the end time of that object and how it comes in and out of your scene. So that's how you can utilize the timeline in Studio. Now let's click on the Scenes tab in the toolbar. So here I can see all of the scenes in my project. So if you've got a really long video, um, you would be able to go through it quickly, take a look at all of your scenes, see how long they all are, um, and then edit directly from this scenes view. So all things to, to explore. To go back to the studio, simply click Edit in Studio, and now we're back here. So those are some different tools that you can use to get started with Capwing Studio. So now let's take a look at what it looks like to export this into a video that we can put online. So what I'm going to do now is just click on export video in the upper right hand toolbar. Capwing will take a little bit of time for your content to render and to be able to be uploaded or shared. So give it some time and then come back once it's done. Here you'll see that your content is being exported. Because we're using a free version of Capwing, this takes just a couple of minutes. So be patient and hold tight until your video is ready. Once your video has rendered, you'll see a page similar to this where you can preview your studio project, download, or go back and edit.
If you're ready to share, you can also copy a link to this page, or you can embed the video directly online. So as you can see, we actually didn't have to log in to start using the studio. So that's a useful if you want to just get started right away with Capwing. However, you'll notice that if we play our video here, there is a watermark in the bottom right corner. So there's a way that we can easily remove that. And all we need to do is create an account to be able to remove the watermark. So click on sign in to remove watermark. So here it'll ask you if you want to continue with Facebook or Google. We recommend using continue with Google and this will simply tie your Capwing account and your studio project into your existing Google account. So once you're logged in, it's going to export a watermark free version of your project. So that's really convenient if you're putting it really anywhere online um, in a place where you don't want a watermark. So if you don't want a watermark, it's as simple as creating an account via that sign in option. As you can see with the re-rendering of our project, once we have an account created, there is no watermark on our project video. So if that's something that's important to you or you want to be able to regularly come back and edit and access your previous projects, we highly recommend creating an account to do so. So as you can see, here's our project page with the same options. We can download, edit, make a copy of that project, copy a link to this page or embed the video directly onto a website. So be sure to check out Capwing Studio. This is an awesome tool to get started with video production. And it's even cooler because you can record directly in the studio, whether that be audio, video, or both audio and visual recording. So good luck with using this digital tool and be sure to check out the other digital tool tutorials in our YouTube playlist.